Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we're reviewing the MyFac by MyMedic. So MyMedic is a relatively new company and they build medical kits for the consumer where a lot of IFAC companies really target a specialized audience, police, firefighters, EMS, uh, gun people, military, you name it. MyMedic is best known for making kits for everyday use. Now, I do have my issues with some of the things that MyMedic does, some of the products that they use. However, in general, I really like that they are trying to bring medical preparedness to the consumer, to the average person, because you guys, bystanders, can make a huge difference in the outcome of patients. So this right here is their most popular kit. This is the MyFac. So this is like their kind of what they call their basic first aid kit. They've got their MyFac Large, which I've reviewed, which is absolutely monstrous. They've got their everyday carry ones. Um, and I think this one is the one primarily for the consumer. Uh, on the outside here, it's pretty standard case. I don't think there's anything super special about it. You have right here a full Velcro front, which is kind of nice if you want to put morale patches, identification, something. Uh, it does come with their MyMedic patch right there. And then this is all a Molly field. So you can attach, you know, an exterior tourniquet. I would always recommend carrying your massive bleeding supplies on the outside if you can, so you don't have to dig through it. Especially because this kit is not just your basic stop the bleed supplies, there is a lot more in it. Now, one of the things they do sell that you can mount to the outside, I think they're called Billy Bands. Yeah, Billy Bands. Right here, I like these. These are just a super simple product. You can slip this into a loop area. If I can get it here. And you can slip it through two, and then you can basically hold a tourniquet on the outside. Won't protect the tourniquet at all, but it actually holds it pretty well. Any style tourniquet can go in here, whether that's a cat, a soft T wide, uh, you name it, it's gonna work. So kind of a neat product, not the first of its kind, but I really like this kind of tourniquet securing device. One thing about MyMedic, and one thing they sent me on the outside of this kit, is that they recently bought RATS, uh, so the RATS tourniquet, which those of you that have been watching this channel for a while know my feelings on that tourniquet. I have one right here, actually. Um, I don't like this for a couple reasons, and this always stirs up controversy. Um, I don't recommend this. It is not uh, COTC, so C-O-T triple C uh, recommended. It has some major flaws. So for starters, when you're looking at a tourniquet, we wanna look at ease of application. Now, this is relatively difficult to apply for a single person. It's one thing to put it on in practice. What you do, you start looping this around the leg here, and then you make like three loops, and then you secure it in there. Um, it's just kind of difficult to do, especially if your hands were bloody, if you're stressed out. It's something where all of these elastic tourniquets, including the uh, stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet, they're just not great for self-application and they come off pretty easily. Now, a couple other things I don't like about it. This band is really, really thin. The thicker the band, the better. Now, this brand says that you get the one and a half inch thickness by wrapping it multiple times, so it becomes just as thick as any other tourniquet. This still offers much higher occlusion pressures than your CAT tourniquet or other TCCC approved options, which makes it more painful and you have more tissue breakdown. End of the world, no, but it is one disadvantage of it. Now, anecdotally, I have noticed in my own testing and things that this bracket, this tourniquet will come off with patient movement. Um, if you're moving them, bump them, it'll come off. Also, any elastic tourniquet will loosen over time. So I am not a huge fan of this. Now, a lot of people misconstrue when I'm talking about how bad rats are, uh, because I don't like them. They think that what I'm saying is that they'll never work. And they're like, well, I got one and it worked for me. Like, how can you say these don't work? Like they seem to work. It's not about it working. It's about it working more effectively than some of the other recommended tourniquets on the market. And this just doesn't. It hasn't stood up in, I think there was six research articles or published about it. And it really kind of lags behind some of the other technology. So that's all I'm gonna say about this. Uh, you can buy the cat tourniquet from my medic and replace that in the kit. Uh, I had some feedback from people that their customer service was great. They called them, they ordered a kit, called them, were like, hey, 
can you replace the cat tourniquet or the rat's tourniquet with a cat? And they threw it in there. So be aware that's an option. I don't recommend this guy. Moving on to the kit itself. Sorry, that was a little bit of a tangent. Out here, we've got some trauma shears. Now, these are, I'd say they're a little bit higher quality than your um, kind of basic $2 shears, but these are nowhere near like your X shears or your Raptors or anything like that. These will work one or two times before you have to replace them. And that's really what they're intended for. They're supposed to be just a quick use it once because you're not hopefully cutting people's clothes off on a regular basis if you're kind of a civilian. Uh, kit itself, it's Cordura nylon, very sturdy. The zippers are huge and you have two finger pull tabs here. These things aren't gonna break, they're not gonna wear down. I have no worries about that. Clip on the front that holds it in and what's cool is you've got this Molly backing. You can put this on anything you want. This is not a professional hitter's kit. You're not gonna put this on a plate carry. It's simply too bulky and that's not what it's intended for. You could, however, put this on a backpack, put this on the headrest of your car, you know, somewhere else. And this will come off and allow you to quickly deploy the kit. So that's a nice feature to have, pretty standard on Mimetic products. Coming into it, we've got this closure here, just one extra closure. Honestly, you could probably uh, get rid of this, cut this off, it would be no issues. Just one more thing to get through and it's not really accomplishing anything as far as I can tell. The kit is freaking massive. So we have a ton of stuff. Be aware that when we're talking about uh, a kit like this, there are a lot of minor wound care items in here, and that's great if you're kind of everyday Joe going about your business. The issue with that becomes if you are digging through this to find a life-saving supply, that's a problem. So I would recommend taking your cat tourniquet and mounting it to the outside of this kit if you can. Um, that's just really easy access. And then making sure your quick clot, your packing gauze, is somewhere that's really, really accessible when you open it up so you don't have to dig through it. Somebody else can find it because seconds count in these situations. We're just gonna stop, start in the top lid and we're gonna work our way down. So the top lid here, we've got a couple different supplies. This is one of my first looks into this kit. So I'm kind of learning with you as we go and I'm just kind of giving you my honest opinions of it. Um, in here, you've got the rat string kit was on the top, uh, on the outside. We've got just a wrapping bandage here. Um, they kind of have branded all their own stuff. They don't source from North American Rescue or anything like that keeps the price down a little bit. This does come in a pro version and a basic version. I have the pro version here. Obviously there's a price difference between the two. You can go on their website and check it out to see what the difference is. So this is just a pressure bandage. Wrapping your wounds, really important to have. And the top here, we've got two different packages and these are treatment and relief. So in here you've got three triple antibiotics, two lip balm, two sunscreen, two sting relief towelettes, uh, one white petroleum, two hydrocortisone itch relief, two oral pain relief, one ammonia towelette, uh, and one chafing, thing of chafing cream. This guy here is just your minor wounds. It's uh, nothing special, but it's kind of cool that it comes in this color-coded thing. It's not a life-threatening issue, but it's going to maybe make the difference between your you know, day hike or something you're doing with the family. If somebody gets stung, you know, you need this. It's good to have some of these minor supplies. So I do like that they include that. Next to it, you have something that's color-coded the same, and I haven't really looked up on the color coding, but I'm guessing this is like your minor treatment things, and this is your clean and prep mod. So in here, you've got four antiseptic wipes, four hand sanitizers, and one iodine prep pad. Once again, good to have minor items. Now, to the left of the kit, or I guess my left, your right, um, we've got just a couple Eye drops, some sterile water for some eye flushes. Is this enough to get a crazy chemical out of the eyes? Absolutely not. Is it enough to have some relief? Yes, it is. So you've got two of those guys here to flush wounds, flush your eyes, you name it. And then we've got a little toolkit here. Uh, kind of a cool thing to have, once again. Um, is it life-threatening? Is it gonna save somebody's life? No, but you've got a pen light for checking pupillary re uh, reactions. You can look in the ears, in the nose, everything like that. You've got a thermometer for taking your oral thermometers. Um, you know, there's a joke, is how do you tell the difference between an oral and a rectal thermometer? And the answer there is the taste. Also, rectals usually have a red tip. So this one is an oral thermometer. It's gonna get you pretty accurate temperatures there. Uh, you've got a whistle in there and you've got some tweezers. So this is gonna help you kind of with your diagnostics. Now you're gonna notice in here, we've got a couple of these loops here, and then we've got a pocket and we have a second pocket. Now, 
Back behind this, we have our um, quick clot gauze. This is the same quick clot that comes in a lot of the like IFAC kits. It's the same material, it's for wound packing. The difference between this and the one that's green and the one that's black is one, it's not tactical, so it doesn't cost quite as much, but also it doesn't have as much gauze in it. So it's not as long. If you wanted to repack with the other end of the gauze, this probably wouldn't be enough for you. So I like having a little bit more, but these will work for you. They also save the cost just a little bit. Now, coming into the top, we have a real big pressure bandage here for wrapping your wounds. If you did pack a wound, uh, wrapping that in place at a junctional site, really important to have, and then, you know, your head wounds. There's tons of uses for wrapping gauze there. And finally, on the far back, we've got the gauze mods. So they're really moving to these color-coded mods. Um, I like this for the non-life-threatening issues because it, I, it's not time critical that I get into this. If it was time critical, I don't want this in this kind of packaging. It's just a little bit too much. So in here, you have three 2x2 two two gauzes, uh, two 4x4 four four gauze pads, three non-adherent gauze pads that are 2x2s, two, two, two non-adherent gauze pads that are 3x4s, uh, one 2-inch two conforming gauze roll, and one 3-inch conforming gauze roll. So your minor wounds um, that go beyond a Band-Aid but don't go to wound packing or anything like that. Super nice to have. Last but not least, in this back pocket, you've got two of these bandage packs. Now, these are just a crap ton of bandages. They're high quality. Um, here, I opened one. That's why I only pulled out two. Um, but these are just a bunch of band-aids for a whole different situations. You've got your elbow ones, your finger ones, knuckles, whatever. Important to have band-aids. It's something that you need. Now, do you necessarily need both of these in there? I, I don't really think so. I think that's a little bit much uh, for the average trip, but you got to. You could take one out, save some space there. So we've got the bandage, bandage pack in there, and that's what's in this top. Uh, like I said, recommendation is you take your quick clot and you move it somewhere else along with some rolling gauze. You can put that on the outside of the pack with the molly and the tourniquet of your choice. So coming into the middle compartment here, we've got a bunch of other stuff. I'm gonna get some of this out of the way to make more room. We've got a bunch of other stuff in here, and we're going to go through it piece by piece. So we've got the hydration mod, electrolyte, super important. Uh, it, you can add this to somebody's water. You can get dehydrated and have issues. If you're not only drinking water, you're not drinking electrolytes, just kind of a rescue option for you there. Underneath, let's see if I can get at, get at it. I don't even know what these are. Give me a second. I can read. Oh, you got two nasal pharyngeal airways. So let's open them up, see what these guys look like. And this is a 20 French, and then the other one is a 28 French. So two pretty standard sizes for you. 28 French is what I carry in most of my kits here. This guy is more your pediatric nasopharyngeal airway. Uh, NPAs are becoming the most common kind of uh, option for uh, a basic airway, just because they're so easy to put in. This is it, just goes in the nose holds that airway open, but doesn't protect the airway. It just keeps your tongue from falling back. Uh, we're not using OPAs anymore. So your oral pharyngeal airways, we're really going to these, even patients with head injuries. Now, granted, I'm not authorizing you to do this. Follow your own protocols and guidelines. Uh, the chance of these actually going to the brain like they used to say they would in the severe head injuries, it, it's just not happening. So a lot of people are going to NPAs. I like that they're included. And I also like, I don't think there's any OPAs in here. So it's just nice and space saving there. Now in there, we've got a packet of lube that'll help you get that in there. And then you've got antiseptic towelette. And I don't know if these gloves came out of this kit or not, but um, they were in there. So you've got some PPE that you can use for other things there. And like I said, you got the 20 French and the 28 French. All right, coming more into it, we've got just a bunch of paracord survival situation. No, this is not an adequate uh, tourniquet. You might've mistaken this for the rats, but it's not, I promise. This is just paracord for your survival situations. Um, you know, lashing something, you, there's a ton of uses for it. So comes in here, that's awesome. All right, so here we've got a blister mod. Now this is their super skin. Um, I haven't actually gotten my hands on this yet, but they're super excited about it. A couple NFL teams are starting to adopt this for use. And it's like a super thin, super high tech uh, moleskin, if you've ever used that for hiking. Uh, obviously I'm not too adept at getting it off. There we go. So this guy right here can go over a blister, over a piece of skin, and this is super, super stretchy. It's actually kind of a cool elastic material, and it is very, very sticky as we put it on. So 
put right on, works great. Um, this is one of the technologies that they're starting to debut and bring out a lot more of. So kind of a cool option. It's cool that this blister mod uh, is so tiny. I'm going on an elk hunt. Um, you'll pro I'm probably on the elk hunt while you're watching this video because I'm pre-filming this. Um, and I'm bringing a couple of these blister mods because I just bought new boots and I'm going to go hike, you know, 30 some miles. So, you know, kudos to me, I guess. Got a glow stick chem light if you wanna be tactical. Uh, in there for marking things, you know, quick triage, things like that. CPR shield in here, something that's cool to have. Uh, you can do the 32 ratio. Now, what I tell people is that you don't necessarily need a CPR shield. Um, 30 to two compressions, 15 to two for children is great. If that's how you're trained, do it. Most studies uh, that are out there are saying that there's no huge difference in survivability between just doing continuous compressions and doing 32, 15 to two. Kids, you wanna do it a little bit more, but adults, 30 to two is adequate because you're only uh, really perfusing about, I think it's like 17% is your ejection there from your heart. So you only need to oxygenate about 17% the amount you'd have to do normally, which they're getting every time you compress the chest, they're breathing in slightly and getting some of that air. However, this will help you if they're in respiratory rest, they're apneic, they're not breathing, you know, whether that's a drug overdose, head injury, you can do this and breathe for the patients and then you don't have to put your mouth on their mouth. It makes it a little bit safer for you and them. Uh, underneath that, We've got hyphen chest seals. So I guess I misspoke. They're still sourcing a couple things from North American Rescue here. This is my chest seal of choice for every kit that I have because it's so tiny, works well, it's vented. Um, I thought my medic had their own chest seal, but it's not in this kit. So curious about that. Um, that's just tucked in there. Once again, life-saving intervention should be easily accessible. Uh, so I'd rearrange this just a little bit. And for the far back, you've got your burn mod not huge on burn gels. Um, they work good for your minor burns, stuff like that. If you have a severe burn, stopping the burning process, covering it with a sterile dressing that's not gonna stick in the wound and getting them to a burn center is the crucial thing to do. Uh, burn gels for severe burns, I'd avoid it. I personally avoid it professionally. We don't do anything with that. Um, but this is for your minor burns. You've got one four by four burn relief dressing and four burn relief gels uh, in there in the kit and that's all that's in this guy. So coming into this side, we've got a cold pack. Great for your inflammatory processes. You know, somebody sprains their ankle, something you can put that on there. A uh, little note, I'm going on a lot of tangents on this video. Um, just be aware that actually putting cold packs on things, it can feel good and it's good for pain relief, but there's some data out there to suggest that this, because it impedes that inflammatory process that's meant to get these healing uh, things to that injury, it might actually slow down your recovery slightly. So I don't usually do ice packs on things unless I'm hurting a lot and I just need some relief. Good for some of that relief for sure. All right, so in here, we've got the sprain and fracture module. So once again, haven't opened this, let's open it. Getting into it, we've got some super wrap. It, it's cling, or it's, um, sorry, this is Coban there. So put that on. I'm sure there's something proprietary about it here. We've got a compression bandage to put on a splint or something like that. And then we've got a finger splint here. It's kind of like that Sam splint. They're going to kill me for using somebody else's brand a video. But anyways, it's like that really conforming splint you can put on a finger and you can wrap it around and then you have a triangular bandage. Super great for your slings and swaths. Uh, going to make your patients a lot happier as they go on. So you've got some tape in here as well. Now the bigger kit does have a, uh, like a Sam style splint, one of those conforming splints in it. Uh, this one doesn't look like it comes with that. So this is just some medical tape. So many uses for medical tape there. And that's what's in your fracture mod. And then last but not least, you have this removable compartment. So if you want to simplify this a little bit and just have it a clamshell opening kit, just like this, you can. Um, however, this just holds a couple extra things in it. Let's go through it. And I'm kind of learning with you guys, giving you my honest feedback on it. All right, you got PPE, got some gloves, super important. Now, people in my comment section always roast me every time I forget to put in like gloves in a kit or you know, have measly accessible. 
PP is great. You should wear it. It's standard of care. It protects you. It protects the patient. These are not sterile gloves, though. If you don't have any cuts on your hands and you touch blood, you're not going to transmit anything to yourself. Um, so it's really just keeping an extra barrier between you and the patient, but your skin protects you very, very well. So this is never my first consideration, especially with those immediate bleed situations. I'm going to get blood on me. It's going to happen. I get blood on me professionally. You wipe it off. Uh, you follow as much PPE guidelines as you can, but there are times where it just happens and it's really not that big of a deal. If you're concerned about it, talk to your healthcare provider. Um, all right, so coming into this a little bit more, medication mod. So in here, we've got four ibuprofen, four uh, aspirin, or sorry, two aspirin, two diotame, uh, two Dramamine, two Diphen, two Dynamode, two cold and flu meds. So we've got anti-diarrhea, allergy relief, motion sickness, diarrhea, nausea, pain relief, fever reducer, pain reliever um, are all in here. So just kind of a nice over-the-counter med, and those all come in their own little packets as you go. All right, so we've got a space blanket here. Now, this is for your hypothermia. Hypothermia kills and trauma. I've said it a million times. It should probably be my intro. Um, with here, it's just a survival blanket. It's going to help you keep a casualty warm. All right, coming up to some of the last things in this guy. I'll get them all out here. Okay, so we have a mini wound closure mod. So this guy, we'll just open this up so I can show you exactly what it is. In here, you've got liquid skin. So the jury's out with this stuff. If this is something I really recommend or not, it's basically like a super glue that you can put over like a minor cut or something. I don't like using this. Um, super glue, never use it. This is technically meant to be that, just covers stuff up. And you can use it on blisters, some other things, but I, I don't usually use it. Uh, and then you have the equivalent of steri strips. So these are basically strips that you take, you put on your hand, you close the wound, and they'll just pull those gaping wounds closed. It's not a substitute for stitches. However, um, this can be used in the interim. If you're away from a doctor's office, you can get that closed. You know, if you don't mind maybe a little bit of an uglier scar, you can put this on, um, close it up. It should work fine. You don't want a wound gaping for any period of time. Um, so these are Z-Zips. So let's see what this guy is here. I think I looked at these. I think they might have gone through a name change here. As we open this up, man, there's instructions and everything. Holy crap. Okay. So this is another wound closure option for you. As we open it up, we have these guys here. So they used to have one that was like, it, it would kind of stick into your skin. And I don't think they have one of those. Um, this comes with two of these guys. So what you do, you'd take this off. You'd put this to either side of that gaping wound. And then it looks like, let's see. Yeah, you take this and you can pull them closed. There's directions, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not doing this how you should be doing it, but you can basically close that wound up and it's going to hold it together a little bit easier. So something to have, it's kind of nice. Once again, doesn't take the place of stitches, uh, but it is something that can be used to close a wound. If it's really big, you could take both sides of them um, and do, like do one and then another one to close it up. So you got some wound closure options, liquid skin, all of that. This guy, you know, people always ask like, well, are you doing sutures for people? I, I don't. Paramedics don't really do sutures. Um, life-threatening bleeding, that's not when sutures come into play. You're not using sutures for life-threatening bleeding um, unless you're really talking about like stitching an artery or something. Um, so I don't usually do that. Uh, you know, my wife taught me how to do it when she was in medical school, but um, just not a skill that you really need, especially even in the wilderness, you know, a lot of times you can get these things, they work just fine. Um, not the biggest skill to learn if you're gonna learn one thing. Last but not loose, least, we have glucose paste. So if you have a diabetic emergency, you can take this, blood sugar's getting low, put this between their gum, um, and this is going to bring them up over time. Now these take a while. So I hate using oral glucose on the ambulance because it means we're sitting on scene with a patient for like half an hour to 45 minutes waiting for this to get their blood blood glucose up. I usually like to start an IV, give them some uh, D10 or um, give them some glucagon IM uh, is my method of choice. But if I'm off duty, obviously I'm not doing those things. This is going to work okay. 
You're not supposed to use this on somebody that's unresponsive, completely unresponsive, um, because it's an airway risk. That being said, if you put some on your finger, you rub it on their gums there, you can get them to uh, wake up over time and increase their blood sugar in a true emergency situation where you can't get anybody else there. Not telling you to do that, just saying that it's possible, you just have to be really careful with their airway. So that is everything that comes in this beastly kit. Like I said, you've got the advanced option, the basic option. I'm not entirely sure what the differences are between the basic and advanced. I know this is a lot of stuff in one. I would recommend if you buy this, that you go through it and you really find what you need and what fits you, and then you take out anything you don't need or aren't trained to use, because it's not going to help you, it's gonna clutter it up, take up a lot of space, and then you're gonna be digging for things, and when you need something, you need it, even some of the minor items. All in all, I think it's really cool that these uh, this company is marketing this towards the layperson. I think there's a lot of really good stuff in here. Um, I think they're moving in a really awesome direction, so I'm excited to see them grow. If you do wanna pick one of these kits up, I do have an affiliate link below. Use it or don't. Um, I'm not really concerned about it there, but it does help support the channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week.